Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at another 8-bit dough controller. Today it is the SN30 Pro for Xbox Cloud Gaming. This is designed to work with your Android phone if you are connecting up with Microsoft's new cloud streaming service. And we're going to take a closer look and see what this controller is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from 8 Doe. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one has paid for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this controller is all about. Now, the price point on this one is $45. In addition to the controller, you get a really nice clip here in the box that you can use to attach your smartphone to it. After all, this is designed for the cloud gaming service. Now, this controller looks a lot like its cousin here, the 8-bit Doe SN30 Pro that came out a little while ago. This was a Super Nintendo-inspired controller that added some analog controls and additional buttons here on the top. Unfortunately, this new one doesn't have the compatibility that the old one did. So although this looks like something that would work with an Xbox game console, it doesn't. In fact, it just has Bluetooth direct input compatibility and nothing else. Uh, the old one here would do X input and would work with the Nintendo Switch. This one is a lot more limited in its compatibility. I hope at some point they can offer a firmware update to at least make it work with the Xbox game console. But at the moment, it's best suited probably for the cloud gaming service that you would use on your Android phone. If you're looking to do something with the PC, I think their other controller here is probably the better buy. It also lacks rumble. Uh, and of course, you don't get the motion controls with this either that are on the other SN30 Pro controller. So it's more limited, uh, although it does have all of the Xbox branding and the buttons in the right place. Physically, though, it feels nice. It feels very similar to the other controller. It's got a great D-pad on here, uh, certainly as good as the other 8-bit Doe controllers and probably one of the better D-pads on the market. Uh, great analog controls here. You'll see the PC software that you can use to adjust it in a little bit. Uh, your buttons will feel very Xbox-like, and of course, everything is labeled appropriately here. The one difference of this controller versus the other SN30 Pro that they make is that this one has an analog trigger on it, uh, whereas the other controller's triggers are digital. Uh, so that was nice to see. Now it will connect up with Bluetooth to your phone. If you want a little less latency, you can connect it directly via USB Type-C here at the top. Uh, this is also how you charge it. You get about 15 to 18 hours of usage out of the controller, but of course, if you have it plugged in, you will probably go longer with that. 8-bit those controllers from the input lag standpoint are among the best on the market. Uh, these things do just as well as Microsoft's own controllers in my testing of lag and latency. So they are really, really good for that, although some Android phones will introduce more lag than others. And again, when in doubt, plug in if you can. Now, although the compatibility is limited, it does work across most Android devices that we tested it with. Uh, so I found it works fine with the NVIDIA Shield, with just about any phone that you throw at it. It also worked great with Chromebooks. In fact, we were able to download uh, the Xbox Game Pass app on Chrome OS through the Android App Store that runs on those devices, and we were able to use the controller with that as well. Now, the clip that it comes with is very easy to get on and off the controller. Some other versions of 8 bit clips can be a little hard to work with. Uh, so once you get it aligned here, you just snap in this bottom portion and it's on the controller very securely, but very easily comes back off again. It's really not hard to work with, which was nice. Uh, the charger here is available, so you don't have to take the clip off to charge it. And additionally, you've got your pairing button there as well. My only gripe with it is that the adhesive for these little rubber guides that grip your phone is not very strong. So this one here on the left fell off, and I don't know where it went, and now my phone's kind of crooked when it's on there. So I would imagine they'll uh, work this out in manufacturing as they make more of these things, but just be careful with that. Uh, the clip here can take just about any size phone. This is the largest phone that I have. This is the Pixel 4 XL from Google, and in full disclosure, they sent this to us free of charge uh, last year. And it fits this, and it still has some room to go here. So I think if you have a larger phone, it should be fine. Uh, you do want to make sure you get your volume rocker in the right spot, because a lot of times that top part of the clip will get 
right where your volume controls are. But there's no tightening of it. It's spring-loaded here, so it's on there pretty good and uh, really has a good grip on the phone, even with a missing guide here. And you shouldn't have to take your case off to get your phone attached. If you like the clip design, they make one for the Xbox controllers from Microsoft. So you can buy the clip by itself for those controllers if you don't want to buy the 8 one. Now, one of my gripes with the SN30 Pro controller design over the years is that it tends to get a little top heavy when you've got a big phone clip to it. It always wants to lurch forward and it puts some pressure on your hands and wrists to keep it in the place that you want. So what they did with the clip design here was add a second axis. So you could, of course, have it like this, no problem. It's just going to be a little top heavy. But you can uh, take the clip here and position it so the phone is kind of centered over the controller. And this helps balance out the weight a bit so it's not putting as much uh, forward pressure on your wrist as you're playing around with it. Now, once you get everything set into a comfortable position and you've got those screws tightened, it doesn't move. You can shake it pretty decently. You can try to force it to move. It doesn't. So you will have a position kind of locked in even after you take the clip off. So I was very happy with that. I found that this position is probably the most comfortable for this phone. Uh, so I can still kind of get at the Xbox button under here, but my thumb will rub up against the metal screw. But the other buttons are accessible pretty nicely here, especially the ones that you'll be using most while you're playing a game. And I found gameplay to be pretty nice on it. I really like the analog triggers on this. They've got a nice travel and a little bit of tension to them, so they really feel good. You can kind of get a good feel for how much uh, you are pressing down on those. The analog sticks here feel great as they do on other 8-bit dough controllers. I found with them is that once they find something that works, they tend to stick with it and then iterate on other portions of their design that need additional work. So this is kind of a really good experience and I think a good pairing with the cloud gaming service. But again, I would love to see this controller work uh, on the Xbox console itself. And because Android sees this as a regular game controller, any Android app that supports controllers will work with this one. It's not just limited to the Microsoft thing here. So we're playing uh, the port of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 here on Android, and it runs just fine. And it's better, of course, to use this versus the touch display. So if there are other games or emulators that you want to use with it, it should work just as well as it does with the Xbox service. Now, the controller is customizable if you have a Mac or a PC handy. They've got some really nice software here to make adjustments. Uh, so the first option that you have is the ability to map buttons differently. Uh, so if I wanted my left trigger, for example, to be mapped to some other button on the controller, I could set that up. I could also disable buttons, and I can set a number of different profiles. So what I can do here is just create a profile and I could have it behave a certain way when I'm in one game and have it do something differently when I'm in another. And you can toggle between profiles by pushing the uh, little 8-bit dough button down there at the bottom. Uh, you can't have it do things that the controller can't do, so you can't do macros or add key presses or that sort of thing. But if you have a button that you're always pushing by accident and you want to just disable it, you have the ability to do that if you want. You also can adjust the sensitivity of the control sticks here. Uh, so you can see as I'm moving things around, it's detecting movement. This is also a good way to test the controller as well. And if you wanted to get a feel for the sensitivity here, we can pull up my uh, two-up view here, and you can see that in action here. So there you go. Now what I can do is set some dead zones. Uh, so for example, if I want the controller not to detect uh, this circle here that I'm expanding, what will happen is, is it won't register anything with the uh, game that I'm playing until I get beyond that circle. And I can set the dead zone both from the center but also from uh, the other side here as well. So you can have a very sensitive region here and then have it ignore anything else beyond that. So you can really get in there and start fine-tuning everything. Uh, you also can go in and invert all of the controls. You can swap sticks. You can have uh, the D-pad and left stick swap places if you prefer to use one over the other in a game that only supports one. So you have a lot of options there. Uh, you have similar controls here on the analog triggers as well. Uh, so as you can see, uh, just by default, what the sensitivity here is of those analog triggers. And again, I really like the tension on them, so you can get a feel for that. Uh, but I could also set a dead zone here as well, so it doesn't start registering until after I get past that point. And again, you can fine-tune this and then save it as a profile 
uh, for your game that uh, might be giving you some trouble. And then, of course, we can swap these as well. So when I hit that, you can see the left trigger is now the right trigger and you can go in there and really have at it. So overall, this is a solid offering for its intended purpose, but the other 8-bit Do controllers offer a little more value at the moment. So the other SN30 Pro, for example, will work with the Nintendo Switch. It supports direct input just like this one does for cloud gaming on Android, for example, and other Android apps. It supports X input. It has rumble motors and motion controls in here as well. It just does more. And I think that's something you might want to consider if you are on the lookout for a multi-function controller that can work with more than just one thing. And that's what I've come to love about these 8-bit though controllers and why I was so surprised there was such limited compatibility on this new one. I think if they can add Xbox console functionality to this, that would increase its value proposition quite a bit. But at the moment, there isn't as much value packed in here as there is in one of these. Now, of course, these don't work with the Xbox console either, but they work with just about anything else out there. So we'll have to wait and see if they make some improvements here. One thing I do like quite a bit, though, is the clip. And this clip actually fits on the other 8-bit Do SN30 Pro controllers. So I hope they offer this for the other ones because it does solve that top-heavy issue I've had when I have phones clipped to it. So I would love to see this be made available for those. And again, you can get this clip now uh, for the original Xbox controller if you want to go with that from Microsoft. So good to see 8-Bit Doe kind of getting into the Xbox space here. If they add uh, console compatibility here, I'd be much more excited about it. But I think you should strongly consider one of these if you're in the market for one of these. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.